The image that you see on the screen right now is a painting that I did of the Skagit Valley in Washington State. Um, I used to live in Washington State and every spring my father would take me up to Skagit Valley to see the tulips and it was absolutely beautiful. So this painting in, is in memory of the trips that I took up there with my father. And I decided to recreate this painting in a smaller version. The original painting is quite large and hangs in my living room right now. And anytime anybody sees it, they always call that my happy painting. And I actually created some greeting cards out of it. And I really like that painting. So I decided to make a smaller version. For that, I decided on a 9 by 12. I created two different versions of this painting. And the reason I did that is I wanted to try two different techniques for putting down texture. For the beginning of the video, I'm using the first technique. And for that, I lay down the texture only onto the canvas. And then I let that dry. And then I painted in the background. And then finally, at the end, I came back and painted the tulips themselves. For the second version, I painted the entire background. And then I went back and mixed the painting colors of the tulips with the texture. And then I put that on with a palette knife over the, the background that had already been painted. So continue watching the video and you'll be able to see both methods. They both work. And the items that you need for this painting are molding paste. And I covered molding paste more in another painting that I did. And I'm showing that image right now. Those are wildflowers I did in two different color versions. If you watch that video, you can learn about mixing colors and using two different color palettes. So for this painting, I also have my colors chosen and I'm listing those on the screen. And in addition to that, you'll also need your usual items such as brushes and a plate for mixing the colors. And I just use these inexpensive um, foam type paper plates. They're, they're more of a foam and they have a nice coating on them so the paint mixes well on it and does not absorb into the paper. And then you need a water cup. I'll also be using the palette knife just for laying down the texture. I may use it a little bit more later as well. And I also use a number eight rounded brush and a couple of smaller flat brushes. That's not super important. You can use whatever brushes you like, but that just happens to be what I'm using. I also use paper napkins for wiping off my brushes. Now, since I don't have any paint down here, there's nothing on my palette. It's clean, so I can go ahead and just dip that right into the molding paste. And I'm just going to paint in the background tulips. And I'll probably put about four across the back. I should have probably at least three layers of tulips. And the way that I do tulips, I like to use this palette knife. It has a short side, a long side, but it has a point in the middle there. And I can, I can lay down the back petal and then take and kind of create a front petal and a petal like that. And it automatically sort of creates a nice, really nice little tulip for me. So this is sort of almost like one of those little parrot type tulips. Now this is fairly heavy molding paste. It's, it's actually not officially heavy molding paste, it's just modeling paste molding paste, but I can see that it laid down fairly heavy. So it will take a little bit to dry. It normally dries in about 15 to 20 minutes. So now I basically have one here in front. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see, while it's wet, you can still work with it. Now it shows you just how heavy that texture is. Okay, now my layers in the background, I want to make sure that there are a lot of nice layers to that. 
So I'm going to plop out a little bit of all of my colors. Now I'm not using my flower colors yet. This is just the greenery. So I just got my brush wet. I'm dabbing off the extra moisture and I'm going to lay in the top layer here. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of each color and putting it on my canvas and I will come back later to add more depth. It takes many layers with acrylic painting to get the depth in. And I can darken this up a little bit by throwing in some green. But right now, I think for the back layer, I don't want to do too much of that. I will bring that in more on, on a front layer. And you can use a smaller brush as you come up into this. I can see though this is going to be a really pretty set of colors. Now I run in all different directions as you can tell because I want this blended really nicely. And I'm kind of kind of keeping my more aqua off to this side. That wasn't particularly a plan. It's just kind of what I'm doing here as I go along. I'm finding that I like that. So that's why no paintings are exactly the same. Any two paintings that I do. Now, as I'm mixing my colors, I dab my brush into one color, sort of off to the side, and then dab the other side into another color. Then you can see that when I paint it like this, the colors are all streaked together, which is really nice. If this were a flat brush, I would dip one corner into one color and one corner into another. Then sometimes I can even grab a tiny bit of white. Don't want too much white though. So this smaller brush, this is a flat brush because this now has the ability to get down into these smaller areas and having a flat brush helps me control that I that, just how close to the edge I get in here. One of my absolute favorite colors is Green Gold by Golden. But it's a little bit hard to find and it's kind of pricey so when I found um, this color by Liquitex. It's just called olive green. To me it's it's more of a um, I don't know, just sort of a yellow green. So it has now been 20 minutes and this is actually starting to set up, believe it or not. So this shows you the up close version. It's starting to take shape really nicely. I really like that color scheme. If I did nothing else with the background, it still looks like a lot of depth and greenery and things, but that will even come together more as I add more layers of paint. Now, if you watch my other videos, you'll see that I use a lot of Payne's Gray. I use it instead of black because it's a softer tone. Um, other times I may use something like raw umber, which is very dark. I'll use a, a, a tone that's almost black, but to a different color, depending on the rest of my painting. And since this has a lot of blues in it, I think that Payne's Gray will look really nice. A lot of times as paint soaks into canvas, you'll start noticing little areas where you maybe didn't get it down heavy enough, white spots of the canvas that come through. So one thing that I could have done in working with this is I could have done an entire bottom coat of maybe one of these lighter tones or even even a darker green it really doesn't matter a lot of artists put down in one solid coat before they even begin anything then they know the entire canvas is colored they will not end up with any little white spots and I'll, I want to have dark sunlights down here so I'm just starting to do a lot of strokes to just lay down my paint and I'm coming up this way because I want to have an upward motion so I can go light by adding in a bit of white and this is just the background at this point we'll be laying in stems and all sorts of other things at some point here now I can try a little bit of green with the teal as well I don't want it to be too teal like up in here, but by adding the hooker green to that teal color, that kind of brings out a nice tone. 
So you can go lighter or darker down here depending on what your mood is and what you want in your painting. Now I don't want a sudden line around my flower. So I need to bring these up close. I go in different directions. I don't want just one solid color. But you can do a solid color. You can even paint it black if you want. People do all sorts of different things with the sides. But I want it to be light and I want it to kind of carry on to the front side. So I think I'll use that tone. So I'll go ahead and do that while I'm letting this dry. Okay, so I'm finding that it actually takes about an hour for the paste to dry enough to paint. And I painted the purple one there just as a test. It's not entirely set yet, so it was kind of interesting working with it. It's It was almost like painting on jello because the um, the paste wasn't actually firm. So you're not painting on a firm surface. But I was able to paint on it and not really mess up the paste or the texture. So as I come in close here, you can maybe see what I mean. It's really kind of interesting, the effect, and it's actually quite beautiful. I should also mention that when I started painting my um, flower, I changed plates because I didn't want to mess up getting anything getting these colors into my flower colors because I want my flower colors to be really vivid. I also changed my water and washed my brushes. For peach you can use light cadmium red, light cadmium yellow and white, or I just purchased an orange and that should work well as well and I'll mix that with white. And if I wanted, I could add a little bit of red if it ends up not being quite the tone that I want. Now I can pre-mix this, or I can do what I do a lot of the time and kind of mix as I go. But that should be kind of a pretty peach color. Okay, now I should mention too that the cadmiums like cadmium yellow hue and cadmium orange hue, they're sometimes not real opaque. So they lay down better when you add a bit of white to them anyway. Now I'm using my smaller brush and then I just go in there and start painting over it and I have to be kind of careful if I were to push real hard I would probably kind of rearrange this a little bit but it's it's really firm it's kind of like as if you could imagine painting frosting with um, if you had if you had a paintbrush and um, maybe food coloring or something and you're painting over frosting that'd be kind of maybe that'd be kind of fun to try sometime but I won't finish this video until after tomorrow's class and so you, I'll show you that one as well with it pre-mixed so this is kind of nice so because I can add the pure orange and then somewhere I have mixed it. I could even add a little bit of yellow in here to get a variation, but I just kind of wanted a nice peachy tone. Now for the yellow, I don't have a real bright yellow. I kind of went with this gold. Um, it's actually called Naples yellow, and I think it's very pretty. It's a little bit of a gold tone yellow. If you want a brighter yellow, you could always go with this this one from Liquitex is just called Primary Yellow. Um, if you use another brand, um, you might pick up Cadmium Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue, something like that. And as I mentioned, this paste has it's it's white already, and it will dry white. That's different than a gel that dries clear. And tossing in some little streaks of white kind of adds some interest and highlight. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. So I will add that to my list of colors. Adding Payne's Gray will add some nice shadows. Now I'm going back into the yellow, so I have to really thoroughly rinse my brush here. So at this point, it's it actually feels fairly dry to the touch. Now if I were to push on this, though, it's not firm set yet. And so when I use heavy texture like this, it's, I think it's a good idea to add varnish and things later to make sure that you've protected it well. Now, I'm only using certain colors here. 
I didn't bring any reds or pinks into it, and I don't really want to at this point. I think I want to keep to the color tones that I have, but I need to mix it up a bit now. Um, I don't want to have exactly the same color, so these three need to be some kind of a variation of colors. Tulips, I love those parrot tulips because they have so many different colors, and I love all tulips, but parrot tulips have these um, sort of streaks and feathered edges and things to them that are quite interesting. Okay, and then as far as this kind of coloring goes, you can keep messing with that and messing with it, but at this point I'm going to start putting in stems and background. With acrylic painting you don't just put down, you know, just paint something and fill it in and figure you're finished, even if it's has a lot of variation to the color. When you come up and you can tell it's a little bit thin, even though I don't use a lot of water, it just it just doesn't have a finished look yet. But every time you add a new layer, it looks better and better. So I will just grab a bit of paint here and there. And I'll I'll keep doing this until I feel like I've got a good base down. And I could even do this with a palette knife. And I may come back over the top and do a little bit of palette work. Floral paintings are always nice to do because they do have a kind of a happy feeling to them, I think. Now this dabbing with a little different color on the tip of your brush, see that? That's what brings in that look of different plants and things. For my stems, I'm going to have to think about what direction the flowers are going. This one is way off like this because the point is up here and the rounded part comes this way. That is one edge and that's an edge and it kind of goes like this. That's why when I was first laying it down I thought I, I I'd mentioned that I better think about it how I wanted it and I kind of tried to straighten it up a little bit but it didn't really straighten up so if you lay a pencil or any straight line on a flower, then you can see where the stem should be. If I had the stem off or something, that would look really strange, and the eye would definitely pick that up. So I need to have this come off this way. Now I will come back later and add some more stems and things, but for now it's just kind of a suggestion of where the stem would be. Okay, so I'm going to take think just a little bit of the lime and a little bit of the hooker green and just do a little bit of palette knife work a tiny little bit down here at the bottom and I like that because it's a little different texture than the um, than my brushwork had been. So I think this is really quite pretty. So these close-up photos show the incredibly beautiful detail of this painting. And in real life, it's even more textured. There's just no way to totally capture it on camera. Okay, this painting has now dried for a few days. It's really quite firm. I mean, even pressing my fingernails into it, it doesn't really leave any kind of real noticeable mark, but I think I would still varnish it. Now, as I pointed out in the beginning of this video, there are a couple of drawbacks to doing this painting with this method. Um, by not painting in the full background first, after I'm done with all of my tulips, then as you saw, I had to come in and fill in around these edges and make sure to get all up in there really good. Also, this texture is very heavy, so it's a little bit difficult to get real good coverage. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies and places to get into. Now with this real heavy texture you can see that there is white up underneath some of these texture areas. There are little gaps within the flower itself where the white shows up and that can be okay but some of these kind of bother me like right in here that green that has some open areas. And around here underneath the tulips there where you can see that white canvas around the green. I will fix that 
this texture is so heavy on these tulips that they're right here close to you. This one appears a little further away, but these are really standing out. And yet I have the stems just sort of disappearing into the background. And I did put some leaves in front of them, but there's not any texture to these leaves. So I think the first thing that I need to do is I need to build up a little texture and put down the leaves here. This is the painting that I did in class a couple of days ago. I used this painting to demonstrate the technique of putting the entire background down first and then coming back and putting down texture that was already mixed with paint. And this works better in a faster setting like that. We certainly didn't have an hour to an hour and a half to just wait for the texture to dry. So I knew I needed to come up with something different. Um, but I, I realized in doing that that I really do like this texture method. I like this method because this is faster. You don't have to wait the hour and a half for an hour for the heavy, heavy texture to dry. Also, when the paint is pre-mixed, with the texture, you just put it down with a palette knife and you have a slightly heavier texture than paint alone. But you can still kind of see greenery behind it and I like that effect actually. It looks more like actual palette work and there are little areas of imperfection where some paint got out outside the lines and I like that. And you can mix the paints with the texture, the molding paste, you can mix different colors together. I'll be showing you that. And so really I was happy with that. And the fact that the background was already in made it easier because you don't have to go back and try to fill in the background up to this. So I'll bring in the camera close so that you can see this part and then I'll show you how I did this. So you can see the difference here. You can actually see some background through this tulip. You can see the little bit of paint around the edges where it's not a perfectly clean edge and I really really like that. It has that abstract look. It, it has a palette knife look to it. So overall I'm very happy with this method as well. Okay so now I'm ready to mix my paint colors of the next tulip with my um, molding paste. You'll notice that these tulips all happen to be leaning that way and the reason for that is that when I was in class I was standing off to this side and I was showing the class how to do things I was reaching over this way and um, so everything kind of happened to be going in that direction so right now I have to make sure that I have this tulip going in a different direction they can all be blowing one way or something but I think for for better composition I should have it mixed up a little bit so to do this part I'll just take a little bit of my molding paste I'm not using so much this time and I'm putting it on my plate like that and then I'm grabbing some color and I don't really have to have the white because the molding paste is white but I'm just showing you how you can mix and change a color um, the molding paste doesn't change a color a lot but it, it will lighten it some now I'm purposely leaving this a little bit straight because I like that then I can even pick up a little bit more of just regular paint. But I have the molding paste in there so it will give it some texture. And then I just create it the same way I did before. And I don't have to have three. So I really like that. There is some sketchiness here as far as I can see the texture underneath of the canvas itself. And I like that. I'm going to just leave it that way. And I don't even think I need to add any more flowers to this now. This is a little darker over here. I could perhaps come in and add just a hint more color. I have to be kind of careful though to kind of tie it in with what I have. So I could even use my paintbrush for a little bit of this. So actually now I'm really quite happy with that as it is. I just need to come down here and add some interest to the bottom part. Okay, so now I have my hookers green, my naples yellow, titanium white, and the thalocyanine. And I list these colors in the beginning of the video. 
and I'm going to be putting down some texture and things down here. So I believe, like I mentioned in the other painting, I'm going to need a little bit of depth here. So this is the molding paste here. Looks a little bit different than the white, so that helps me tell them apart. I can grab a bit of white, a little bit of green, and I have some yellow in there, so that's kind of pretty. And then I can just kind of play around a little bit here. Let's see what I think about some of the colors. You can also paint with the texture using a brush, don't forget that. So I'm going to try that. Certain things I like to do with with a palette knife and certain things I like to do with paintbrush. Now the palette knife lays down the texture a little more heavy, a little bit heavier. I like how this goes up this way, it kind of breaks up. This is more of a line here, but this is heavier on this side, and I think that's why I ended up just not thinking about it, but subconsciously I brought this line up this way. So the leaves are heavier on this end, the flowers are heavier on that end, so I think that it to me appears to be well balanced. So like I always do, I'll let this sit for a bit and look at it over the next few days. So I'm going to bring the camera up so you can see this one close and then I'll go back to my other painting. So this is really quite pretty now. You can see with these images that are up close that the texture is quite pretty and um, it's a little bit softer in that the layers are thinner. Okay, now to kind of beef up the areas around the stems and leaves, especially this one. This one really is almost just standing in front. I don't even have to have foreground in front of it. So I pick up some texture, bring it into my hooker's green and lime. I just picked up a little of each, kind of mixed it till I get the color I want. Then I can bring this down. Doesn't really show up a lot right there, so I'll throw in some some more texture. But now it's not so one-dimensional. It was just looking a little strange to me. And again, I just kind of feel like I wonder what that would look like just coming right on down off. I kind of like that. He is so much larger and standing out in front so much that the stem could just be right in the front there. So now you see close-up images of the heavy texture version of the painting. And I like this overall look just as well as the other one. I just think that this way is perhaps a little bit more difficult to do. You have to have a little more patience working with the texture. I'm going to have a write-up of this along with photos as I went along and a listing of all the materials and everything on my craft and sewing website, craftandfabriclinks.com. And you can go there and look under lessons and go to painting lessons, or you can find it through the craft section. And that'll be everything that I covered in the video written out nicely for you. Thank you for watching my video and please remember to subscribe.